Dear Mojang, wait, you, you know what? This is not even about Mojang. This is about you guys. Yes, you right now watching this video. I mean, okay, not all of you, but I am fed up. You hear me? Every time I do a video on Minecraft that at any point has to deal with the planetary properties of its world, whether it's about how fast it spins or the properties of the nether as a separate planet, I get the same tremendously irritating comments. But didn't you know Austin Minecraft is flat? Oh, really? Really? Minecraft is flat. That's how it's gonna be, huh? A video from Matt proving Minecraft isn't flat using the properties of gravity isn't enough. What about a video from me calculating that it would take a fuel tank the size of two Neptunes filled with rocket fuel in order to accelerate a flat planet enough to experience gravity according to Einstein's principle of equivalence for only one year? And when you ran out of rocket fuel, you would end up floating into space because, you know, no change in velocity, no more gravity. The end. But no, fine, two videos proving it isn't enough. Because there's always another way for Minecraft flat earthers to rationalize the existence of a flat Minecraft world. Unless you rule out every possibility, they'll just keep going and going and going and going and going! Okay, my therapist just informed me that this actually isn't that important because Minecraft is just a video game and isn't real. And like, I think she has a point. I mean, I just kind of wish she'd said something before I spent New Year's Eve double fisting white claws and rage mathing four different full spreadsheets of data in order to prove conclusively that a fictional video game world is round and not flat. But I mean, like, I already have the numbers, right? I mean, it would be a shame to waste them. Otherwise, they just sit there, unused for all of time. So, like any YouTuber, I'm going to ignore my therapist's advice. Let's do this! Is it even remotely possible that the world of Minecraft can possibly be flat? Let's find out. Matt ruled out cuboid planets years ago, and while Einstein's principle of equivalence states that there's literally no difference between an object accelerating when it comes to the forces applied to it and the forces caused by large masses making gravity, I already ruled out the possibility that someone strapped large rockets to the bottom of every Minecraft planet because that would be absurd. There's one more way, just one, that our Minecraft planet could be flat and produce a gravity-like effect on its surface, and it's something that I've talked about on this channel channel before. Centrifugal force. I talked about how this works in great detail before in my episode on Halo Rings and in a sorta of backwards way on my video about Minecraft's day-night cycle, but here is the TLDR. Say you're in a box with no windows or anything and your friend is in another box that looks identical, but their box has rockets on the bottom of it, accelerating it through space at 9.8 meters per second per second. According to Albert Einstein, there is no way to experimentally determine a difference between the box on Earth and the box in space. Balls will fall the same way, light travels the same way. This is the principle of equivalence. The problem is that this setup requires a ton of energy to produce. So clever, mathy people were like, what if there was a way to produce a constant change in velocity without the pesky problem of needing an infinite fuel source? And bada bing, bada boom, they came up with the spinning ring. You see, a ring spinning around and around doesn't need that much energy to maintain, and it does produce a constant change of velocity. You see, if you're standing on a rotating ring at any moment, say, uh, stop there, the body touching the ring isn't actually rotating. It's traveling this direction. This is called the tangential vector. It's basically the direction you'd end up flying if you were tied to a rope and someone let go while swinging you around. It's at 90 degrees to the center of rotation. But since you're standing on the surface of a ring, you don't go flying off into space. Instead, you're constantly bumping into the ring as it spins and it changes your velocity over and over again. The net result of all these forces adding up is the sensation of gravity pulling you away from the center of rotation, which is pretty similar to gravity. The thing is, you don't actually need a ring to produce this effect. A ring just happens to be one of the more efficient shapes to easily balance around a rotating center. You don't even need fancy technology. All you need is a bucket, your arm, water, and a very nervous spouse. If you rotate your arm fast enough, you can create a force strong enough to keep that water in the bucket, even if it's upside down. No halo rings required. 
required. So this is the last possible bastion for a flat Minecraft world. Someone spinning it unceremoniously like a bucket in space. Eat your heart out, Russell's teapot. There's a new philosophical space theme thought experiment king in town. The Minecraft bucket. And while the idea of swinging a giant slab of earth around in a circle may seem utterly ridiculous, and that is because it is, the mathematics of this solution does hold up, making it vaguely possible. Kinda. Sorta. Not really, but sorta. But let's dig into it, shall we? <laughs> We already know some of our limitations right off the bat. Interestingly, several constants in the Minecraft world viably survived this bucket in space scenario. Providing you had rigid enough sides, you could hold in an atmosphere no problem. This also explains the weirdly consistent sky no matter where you fly at night and the seemingly random biome. Since the entire surface is supposedly flat, you don't really get a new viewing angle to the rest of space the way you do when you're living on a sphere. So the sky being pretty much the same everywhere makes a lot of sense. And the random displacement of environments is kind of plausible? We have a lot of unknowns, but there's a lot of stuff working in our favor. For instance, we know the rotational rate for a fact, since a Minecraft day is 20 minutes long. Presuming the light source is somewhere near the center of rotation, this actually limits us by quite a bit. I say light source because, well, if it's a star, things get awfully complicated really quickly. We'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Okay, so we have a big fat slab of Minecraft in space, tied to some kind of space rope, swinging around, and since the day-night cycle is 20 minutes long, we know that it must be making one complete revolution every 20 minutes. Next, we have to measure the gravity of a Minecraft world by falling to death from a specific height and timing how long it takes us to get there using this handy formula, which gets us a sweet gravitational pull of 32.4 meters per second squared of gravitational acceleration over 3 Gs. And with this, we actually have all the information that we need need because the sensation of gravity you feel from a rotating body is created by centrifugal force caused by your changing tangential velocity and its direction and speed. Meaning the longer your radius or the more frequently you spin around, the more gravity you feel. Since our spin rate is fixed at 20 minutes, 1200 seconds, and we know our gravity, our radius, that is our distance away from the center of rotation, must be a fixed, predictable distance. Using this formula and plugging in our numbers, we can figure out that our Minecraft planet must be swinging from a rope 1.2 million meters long in order to create 3.3 g's of gravity. Sweet! Okay, case closed. It's possible. Pack it up. We're going home. <laughs> Not even close. I am just getting started. I mentioned a light source before, and this light source ruins everything. You see, Minecraft isn't just a barren rock, it has life on it. Grass, trees, lily pads, cows and sheep to eat the grass, and lions to eat the- I mean- <laughs> You've seen the movie. And the circle of life all starts with one thing, energy from the sun. This is the case on our planet, and it's definitely the case on the Minecraft planet. Light is an incredibly important mechanic in Minecraft. Without proper lighting, plants won't grow. Grass, which will ordinarily spread to any dirt block nearby at a regular rate, won't spread at all. Sheep, cows, and pigs won't spawn because they require grass blocks to spawn. So no light, no life. And this creates a problem. A big one, actually. The light emitted by our sun is truly immense in a way that I can't easily encapsulate in words. Stars are basically the only things that are powerful enough to emit enough energy to sustain life on a planet-wide scale. A super powerful heat lamp that's only on for 13 minutes a day in order to match the 1,368 watts per square meter of power reaching us from the sun and covering all 3.6 quadrillion square meters of Minecraft planet would need to be pumping out 4.9 exawatts watts of power, which, for context, in 24 real-life hours, this lamp would require 53% of the total energy output created by every single power plant on Earth in an entire year, just for one real-world day of power. So, in short, we need a star, but no big deal, right? Just strap our flat planet to a rotating center above and below the sun so they don't burn up, place her 1.1 million meters away, give her a good slap to get her running at 6,193 meters per second, and we're good to go, right? Absolutely freaking not! Problem one, the properties of the sun. By all my calculations, a sun that could sustain a planet within a habitable zone in an orbit of 1.1 million meters is impossible. 
possible. At least if we're using light. With that luminosity, it's too big to be a neutron star, but too small to be a white dwarf, which suggests that it would probably be at risk of collapsing into a black hole. It's hard to say without calculating the pressures, but honestly, it doesn't matter because we have an even bigger problem gravity. And in this case, it's not the gravity caused by our fake rotation, it's the gravity from the star itself. Stars, even small ones, are massive, and very massive objects create large distortions in space-time. In Newtonian terms, this means they create a large gravitational force. Okay, so, orbits. An orbit was first postulated, at least in detail, by Sir Isaac Newton. And you know, since we're here, let's give our boy Newton some more credit than he usually gets in classrooms across the world, because the story goes, that humans are really stupid, and Newton was the first non-stupid person to realize that objects fall down because he saw an apple fall from a tree, and bam, like that, the dude invents physics. But, I mean, like, obviously humans knew about gravity before Isaac Newton. The story is actually way more awesome than that, and it really betrays the actual genius that was this guy. What actually happened was the guy was sitting and saw an apple fall. That part is true. The part that's often left out, though, is that he saw an apple fall on a windy day. What he noticed was that the apple picked up sideways speed as it fell, which caused it to not only follow a longer arced path, but take a longer time to reach the ground. From this, he was like, hey, like, in theory, could you give something enough sideways speed that not only would it take a longer time to fall down and follow a curved path, but it would be going sideways so quickly that it would just miss the ground over and over and then just keep falling forever and boom! Boom! Orbits from nothing but falling apples and wind. That's all an orbit is in Newtonian terms. Any object falling toward another object can fall forever in a circle around it if it's going sideways fast enough. This sideways speed is called the orbital velocity, and it has some interesting but easy to understand quirks. The closer you are to an object you're orbiting, the stronger its gravitational pull is. Therefore, you have to have a faster sideways speed in order to avoid hitting it. Therefore, objects in higher orbits, while they have more potential energy in them because they're higher up, are moving in slower speeds in relation to the object they're orbiting around. TL, DR, the closer you are to an object with high gravity, the faster you have to move to overpower that gravitational pull and get into an orbit. Does that make sense? No? Well, I'm moving on anyway. The orbital speed of an object that's only 1.1 million meters away from a star with a luminosity of 5.1 times 10 to the negative 11 solar luminosities is 12.6 million meters per second, or 4.22% the speed of light. More importantly, this is dramatically slower than our tangential velocity of 6,000-ish meters per second needed to create gravity from centrifugal force. Meaning, in this scenario, since everything that's on the surface of the Minecraft planet is moving slower than the orbital speed, everything that's not glued down is going to lift off the surface and fall into the sun. Good news is that they would suffocate long before that actually happened. This is our conundrum. We need a light source that's powerful enough to sustain life on our Minecraft slab, a slab that must rotate once every 20 minutes, must be within the habitable zone of its star, and it has to rotate fast enough to counteract the gravitational pull of the star it's orbiting around. If it moves too fast, the gravity will be either too strong or we will surpass our 20 minute speed limit. Too slow and gravity will be too weak or even worse, be in the negative. So at 20 minutes per rotation, we have to definitely be moving faster than our orbital speed, meaning we'll have to be further away, meaning our star has to be bigger and brah, it's an impossible balancing act involving this huge spreadsheet to figure out. Oh, and there's also this fun problem that if you go too high up, your tangential velocity exceeds the speed of light. So that's a no-go and thankfully I found the sweet spot. 32.4 meters per second squared gravity at only 80% the speed of light and just 46.3 billion meters away from the sun, about a third of our distance away from our sun. At this spot, you can get enough sunlight, check, tick the 20 minute rotation rate, and avoid breaking the laws of relativity, uh, mostly. So we're good now, right? Hashtag flat planet confirmed possible? Heck no, what are you, stupid? This is totally impossible. The more energy you put into an orbit, the higher up the orbit wants to be, which is, you know, how things work. If you put more energy into an object in orbit, it won't just kindly stay in its orbital height and add a gravitational force to anybody standing on it. I mean, look, this is me in space, a Kerbal Space Program, flying at 65,000 meters per second 
in a circle around the sun. Is my Kerbal sticking to my ship like it's experiencing centrifugal force? No! That's because the orbit is stable. There's no change to its state. In order for centrifugal force to exist, there needs to be a change in tangential velocity. So while an orbit and a spinning ring look the same because they're both spinning circles, they behave very differently. That means we need a rope tied to something in order to keep our Minecraft planet from kicking up into a higher orbit at these speeds. And this is the ultimate doom of this stupid, stupid idea. Taking into account the average sea level on Minecraft, the height of the atmosphere, and the relative densities of both at an area of 3.6 quadrillion square meters, we're looking at a mass of around 611 quintillion kilograms. You would need a rope of titanium alloy, a material with the highest known tensile strength aside from the very difficult to mass produce graphene. A rope capable of holding forces caused by 611 quintillion kilograms accelerating at 32.4 meters per second squared would have to be 91 1,923 meters thick and surround the entire edge of the Minecraft planet. Okay, so fine. Make a big, thick rope and you're good now. Right, we, we did it now? No! No, we didn't! Because aside from the fact that titanium is freaking opaque and would block the vital sunlight, a rope or a cord or pillar this thick would weigh 4.3, the uh, big number. Lots of zeros, kilograms. Almost as much as our sun, our real one. Way more than Jupiter. It point blank would break under the forces applied to it. It's massive, the... Uh, mass would more than exceed the tensile limits of the material, period. No matter how thick you made it. I just started adding zeros to my numbers to see if it could work, and it couldn't because it's freaking impossible because we know it's impossible. Flat planets can't exist, period. It's stupid to even assume it or try it. Am I crazy here? Like, if you're gonna go through the mental gymnastics in order to justify a flat planet, it's easier to just assume it's a normal round planet floating in space. It makes way more sense. Occam's razor, you silly person. Have you heard of it? I'm gonna go call my therapist and I swear to God, if you suggest Minecraft is flat ever again, I will freaking lose it! Sincerely, Austin. Hey, fun fact you should know while you're considering subscribing to the channel, the very thing that got Matt and I talking to begin with was that we both did videos on Minecraft and Flat Earthers on the exact same day, within hours of each other. We got to talking and uh, here I am now, so just stuff that in your Wikipedia page. <laughs>